Today we're going to talk about how to rebuild a U-door diaphragm pump. We're here today looking at a U-door diaphragm pump with a suspected blown diaphragm. If you've noticed all your oil disappearing out of your oil bowl, it's probably because your diaphragm is blown and it's put all your oil out through your spray lines. If you've noticed your oil bowl filling up full of chemical and the oil's gone all milky, it's because your diaphragm has blown outwards and filled the oil bowl full of chemical. So we need to investigate further what's gone wrong with the pump. Alright, now that we've got the heads off the pump, we can inspect the diaphragms. We recommend doing this with a spanner as the piston is made of aluminium and you don't want to damage the thread at all. We've got the diaphragms out of the pump. Um, we can see which one's been causing us a bit of grief. This one is completely blown out and you can see obvious signs of wear and tear on the diaphragms. Now that we've got the diaphragms out of the pump, it's a good thing to check the pump for wear and tear against the piston and the sleeve. So this pump's in great condition, it's got no movement in between the two. If the pump has been running on water and it's excessively worn, you'll notice a lot of movement in between the piston and the sleeve. This one's no good. Okay, so now we need to decontaminate the pump. This pump's been filled full of chemical and then we need to clean that out with either diesel or kero. Now to do that, we need to take one of the cylinder liners out. We found this pump has been fairly badly contaminated with chemicals, so we're going to pull the eccentric shaft out of the centre of the pump to give it a good, thorough cleaning. Okay, now that we've got the pump all pulled apart, it's all been clean in the Kero washer, it's time to replace the diaphragms. Gold Acres supply a complete pump repair kit, which consists of the four side diaphragms, the air chamber diaphragm, all your valves, your O-rings, and of course your instruction manual on how to put the pump back together. Included in the pump repair kit is the operator and parts manual for our pump. In this case, we're going to rebuild an RO160, which is now superseded by a Z170. You'll find the complete pump breakdown of all the components on how the pump goes back together. It's critical you get all these wear rings and spacer rings in the right order and the exploded diagram will show you exactly how to do that. So when you're putting the diaphragm bolt through the washer, it's critical that you seat the diaphragm onto the diaphragm bolt, like so, to ensure that you've got a good seal in between the two. When you're reassembling the pump, it's critical that you torque the bolts to the correct specifications as shown in the manual. When you're fitting the valves into the pump, ensure that you've got the head around the right way. This is the suction side of the, of the pump, so you can see it's got the ridges for the valve to fit into, like so, and then fit the valve o-ring around the, the valve. We're fitting the pressure valves now, just make sure they fit facing outwards, and then accompany that by the o-ring around the outside. So in this pump we're also going to be changing the air chamber diaphragm. Make sure that you let the air out of the pump before you undo all the bolts.
Next we need to fill the air chamber with air. We don't need much, it's only a small area. 40 PSI is usually enough. So the last step is to put oil in the pump. Uh, it's good practice to turn the pump over, pump the oil into the crankcase. Uh, the pump's only revving at 500 revs a minute, so standard motor oil is always okay to use. Once you've filled your pump with oil, put your lid back on, fit the pump back onto your sprayer, and you should be right to go. Just keep an eye on your oil level. You don't need to have it full. As long as you can see it in the gauge, you should be right.